You've already seen how Navigation Link lets us push to any kind of view you want. Here it's detail view with a book, but it could also be a text or an image wherever you want to. Now because we're inside a navigation view, we'll automatically get access to a little back button here, plus the whole swipe from the edge to go back as well. If you can find it in dark mode, it's sort of there it is, there we go. I think light mode's easier, there we go. Um, you can swipe as well, or press back, whichever one works for you. But sometimes it's useful to be able to go back programmatically, to go back to the previous screen when we want to, rather than when the user presses back or swipes. To demonstrate this, we're gonna add one last feature to our app, back in dark mode again, uh, that will delete whatever book the user is currently looking at if they decide they no longer want it. And to do this, we're gonna show an alert saying, are you really sure um, you wanna delete the book? And delete the book from the current managed object context if they confirm, yes, zap it. Once that's done, there is no point staying on this screen, right? They've, they've said the book goes away, the book no longer exists, Get rid of it, pop that thing, go back to the navigation stack that we had before, back in content view, um, which means go back to the previous screen. Anyway, to do this, we need to add some properties to our detail view, uh, which is here. Let me just reorganize this real fast, get the noise mitts out of order. Um, let's put that like uh, there maybe, and this one down here, that seems fair. There we go, okay, um, <laughs> sorry. First things first, uh, detail view struct. We want to go ahead and add some properties up here to store the information. Uh, one is to hold our core data managed object context so we can delete stuff from here. One will hold our dismiss action from the environment so we can pop the view off the current navigation stack. And one to control whether they're currently showing the alert confirming deletion or not. So we'll start with three new properties. We'll say at environment backslash dot managed object context var mock then at environment backslash dot dismiss and we'll do var dismiss and then at state private var showing delete alert equals false. The second step is to write a method that deletes the current book from our managed object context from mock and then dismisses the current view. And it doesn't matter that this thing is being shown via a navigation link or via a sheet, whatever, we still call dismiss. It's the power of saying dismiss. Dismiss me however I was shown. And so we'll add a new method down here. Uh, func delete book. We'll call mock dot delete our current book. And then again, uh, we'll do try mock dot save. I will comment that out again so it doesn't really save it. Otherwise it'd be for annoying for testing purposes. But in the live one, of course, leave that uncommented and then call dismiss to hide the current view. The third step is to add an alert modifier somewhere out here. It will uh, watch showing delete alert and ask users to confirm the action. Do you really mean to delete this? Now, so far we've only had alerts with a single like, OK button, but here we've got to have two buttons. One will be to delete the book, another to say cancel, sorry, I got hit by accident. Uh, both of these have specific button roles assigned to them that will look correct by iOS automatically. So we're gonna use those. Apple does provide very clear guidance on language here, how we should label alert text. But it kind of boils down to a fairly simple rule. If it's a simple, I understand, then you just say, okay, like simple acceptance. But if there's a choice involved and you want them to make a choice, you want to avoid things like yes and no. And instead use verbs like, uh, ignore or reply or confirm or delete or accept or whatever. In this instance, we're gonna use delete for deleting, which makes sense, destructive button, and they have a cancel button next to it so they can bail out if they need to. So we'll say uh, there's an alert saying delete book, question mark, is presented, bound to dollar showing delete alert. Then we'll have two buttons inside here. One will be a button saying uh, delete, remember, verb, with a role of dot destructive, and the action of our new delete book method. Then a second one will be another button saying cancel, with a role of dot cancel. And there is no action required here, it's an empty closure like that because it'll automatically hide the alert. We'll add a message as well, 
we'll say text. Are you sure? Like that. And the final step now is to add a toolbar item that just basically starts the deletion process. So setting showing delete alert to true. Um, obviously alerts watching that. So making it true will just show the alert. So we'll add one last modifier to the end of our scroll view. We'll say a toolbar with a button inside. When it's pressed, showing delete alert is true. And a label will be, a little bit, the label of uh, delete this book and a system image of trash. So a little sort of rubbish can by default. And now, hopefully we can delete books immediately. I'll press Command R when it finishes building. There we go. I'll select Lord of the Rings. There's our delete icon. I'll press delete now. There's our alert. I'll try cancel first. Great. Notice that by the way, uh, del delete is in red, which is great. I'll press delete. Bang. Deletes, pops it off and goes away. Fantastic. And that is another app complete. Good job.